Hello and welcome everybody and thank you guys for joining me again. My name is Wilkie and I'm here with the second part of the Musa slash Blader Guide series for Black Desert's Blader class. And right now I'm going to talk about the skill add-on system and which skill add-ons you can potentially take and which ones I took or have rather at this point. And if you haven't watched the skill guide video, I'm going to do this in a similar fashion where I'll basically be talking about the PvE side of things. And then in the second part, the PvP side of things for both the Blade and the Mushindo. I'm not gonna make a specifically Blade only skill it on type because really, I don't, I don't think there's, you know, that much of use for that. Um, obviously, the PvE build is going to be covering what you should be taking if you grind with the Blade. And the Mushindo is obviously when you grind with the Mushindo, at which case, I believe the Blade is going to be useless. So you could swap those for PvP. And then the second guide, or in the second part of this guide, I'll be talking about the skill add-ons I use for PvP, which basically includes both Blade and Mushindo, because, you know, I use both of them to PvP with. So I think this is pretty, or at least for me, it's pretty important to have uh, some of these awakenings or skill add-ons, which they are now called, set in place. Anyways, let's just go to the whoops to the skill instructor because that's where I have to get the skill add-ons. I already I also have the um, you know the guide thingy for one day, so I can freely switch. What you're currently seeing at this uh, on the screen is my current setup for PVE. This is this is how I would grind if I had to grind with blade only. And this is how I grind it to level 60 with my Mushindo. So first off, Carver, I really like that skill. It has a spammable, it's a spammable skill and the cooldown does not affect your grinding speed in PvE, so this is really good. All critical hit rate, uh, hit rate plus 10%, so another 10% free crit, and all attack speed. This is going to be overlapping with Rising Storm, but I just took it because sometimes, at least when I was grinding with a blade back then, I ended up having low willpower, so what I had to do was, you know, spam Carver for 3-4 times to get my willpower back and I don't want to lose the attack speed. Rising Storm, my go-to skill for PvE, probably most bladers go-to skill for PvE at some point. So attack against monsters plus 20 is going to give you a huge boost in your clearing speed. Very very good pick. And uh, similar to Carver, Rising Storm has a spammable cooldown so you can ignore it and still get both of these buffs really good. And for the third one, this one is purely meant to uh, function as a recovery tool because it naturally already does recover HP, now it does even more. I'm um, not sure why it says all casting speed. Probably a bug. And obviously instant recovery H uh, willpower is going to somehow mitigate the amount of willpower you spend when using divider. This is really all about the PvE side of the blade. Once I got the Moshindo, what I did was this is why I said in the skill video, Twister is going to become really important for your PvE, at least before you hit f level 60 or whatever, because the Awakening, or the skill add-on that gives you 20 attack against mobs, similar to this one, but on a skill that's even better or faster to execute than Rising Storm. You can basically use Twister after every, or even in between, or during, whatever, every crosscut. So you can spam Twister left and right. So basically you're gonna get a free 20 attack against mobs and another 10% crit. Really, really good awakening or skill it on my bad for PvE. For crosscut, this is one of your main skills, if not the main skill you'll be grinding with. So all attack speed is gonna help you with that. And recover MP or willpower for us is gonna, you know, somehow bolster or mitigate the heavy willpower consumption you will be having and now this you know this might be a bit odd but in all honesty the skill add-ons for below the belt aren't that great sure you could argue that attack against monsters plus 25 is better than 20 but it's only going to give you a five uh, five additional attack compared to twister which is always active and um, so what I always took is PvP attack because this is also very good skill in PvP and the rest of the Awakenings, they don't really help you in PvE at all. So I literally, once I hit 60, I just went with um, PvP attack and burn, which is basically a PvP trade, because for PvE you're not going to be 
you're not gonna notice any of that. And the reason, I'm just gonna showcase what I mean with Twister, right? So basically, crosscut normally looks like this if it's off cooldown. And if I just start pressing spacebar after, you can, I can spam, you can see my stamina going down really, really fast because Twister uses 300 stamina. But basically, if you do this every now and then to get the buff, there we go. And now I have basically 8 seconds of additional crit and attack against mobs. And here, just squeeze it in again. So you, I guess you get the point that this is um, really good. And then just combo to something else. And just literally every now and then squish in Twister to get these skill add-on buffs. Really, really good. It's gonna speed up your grinding quite. It helped me so much because I started off with relatively weak gear. But it helped me insanely much in my grinding speed. And it basically allowed me to grind um, much better and much safer than I would without these skill add-ons. So this is basically what I would recommend you guys to take for PvE. Alright, let's hop over to the PvP section and I basically adjusted most of my skills and um, as I mentioned, this is really a combination of how I use the blade and the machindo for PvP. And there's two things to note about this. First off, I didn't change Twister. The reason for that being is Really, the other skill add-ons, I personally don't find that appealing to me. Maybe you'll find something that you really, really like or you really, really want. But most of the other skill add-ons, I, I did find rather not as good as to give up um, basically free 10% crit. Because I still use Twister quite often and you can potentially squeeze in or even start combos with Twister since it has a stiffness on it. But really... Uh, the main reason is that I'm a bit of a cheap uh, ass and I don't really like resetting my stuff back and forth and spend my memory fragments or permanently have the skill add-on thingy running. So what I usually do is I just, you know, keep one of these for PvE and quite honestly, if I can't kill the enemy, the awakenings or the skill add-ons are not gonna change it. And if I can't kill the enemy, then pretty much the picks are right. But literally... I very rarely had the fight, or basically in none of the fights whatsoever, I had the enemy survive with a teeny weeny bit HP. To be, at least for me, obviously there is, the, the more you fight, you might actually encounter that option, but really, um, for most of the combos I use, the add-ons I would then take are not really great. So I just skip those. But as I said, at level 60, you're basically at the point that you should be able to choose for yourself. But anyways, for the blade. Now, the go-to skill for me for blade, or for PvP with a blade, are still Blooming, which is why I have PvP attack and attack speed, to buff myself up. I'm not sure why the tooltip says something different, this is really iffy. Uh, but basically, if I open with Blooming, or I CC and then switch to Blooming, I then get attack for PvP and attack speed. I usually, after blooming, instantly or most of the time use Rising Storm, so I went for that. Um, another attack speed and defense, this is a bit of a hybrid surrogate pick that gives me defense in case the CC doesn't go off or shit really goes bad. I'm not sure if the plus 15 defense is really going to make a difference, but um, the other awakenings are really not that great. And the last one I took was Stop Arrow because I don't use Dragon Bite anymore. Uh, it's I'm on a personal vendetta with Dragonbite ever since whoever that was that did not allow us to cancel Dragonbite anymore. And as soon as we have 100% Spirit uh, Black Rage, then you will always use your Black Spirit Rage if you try to execute Dragonbite. And it killed me so freaking often after the patch that I think hit in May that changed that so we couldn't cancel Dragonbite anymore. And ever since, I hate that skill, so this is really just my personal thing. If you like Dragon Bite, and if you like comboing with Dragon Bite, you can obviously swap this one out and take Dragon Bite instead. I take Stub Arrow. First off, even if it doesn't CC the enemy, if it hits, it's gonna slow. Not a lot, but a slow is a slow. And it gives me 4% accuracy, which again is not a lot, but it's there for 12 seconds, which is a pretty long time. Which is basically the reason why I took this. Now, for the Moshindo... 
obviously below the belt PvP attack and uh, burn. Now, the burn is free 180 damage, but really the other skill effects are not good for PvP, so this is the reason I took that. Crust Crusher, same thing here, PvP attack plus 15, and burn. Now, there is a plus 20% crit on Cross Crusher. There you go, here, all critical hit rate plus 20. However, after Cross Crusher, if you have it, obviously, if you don't have Foul Play, then this Awakening or Skeleton might actually be good. If you have Foul Play, what you'll be using is Cross Crusher and then Foul Play. And Foul Play has. 100% crit rate already. So, as um, if I'm not mistaken, there's no such thing as a crit resistance or anything in this game. So, there's pretty much no point to take an Awakening or a Skeleton buff that buffs your crit, because the follow-up skill can already crit 100% of the time, so yeah, you get the point. It would be kind of a bit useless to buff your crit, because... And the second thing is, if the enemy doesn't die after getting hit by Cross Crusher and Foul Play, he's either super hell of a tank that will not die with anything that you can slap onto you, but really, you either missed your target or you have pretty, well, mediocre bad gear. But Cross Crusher just has so enormously high scalings that even I, with my um, let me put the gear on so you can know what my stats are. These are my stats, really. Not, not, not the burst, not the best. Obviously, my defense is pretty shit. I use duo, but my total AP is not that great. And even at that AP, I deleted a 260 DP guy in the arena. He, well, he had 259, but really. And basically, what I did is I went for below the belt and then had a back attack for Cross Crusher and Foul Play, and it, he was gone. And I was like, what the hell? My AP is not that great, but still, Cross Crusher and Foul Play are just so insanely hard-hitting skills. Plus, they have damage modifiers, like this one has a knockdown and a down attack. Um, there we go, this one has also a down... So, th it's just... It basically, you're going nuclear, really. This is... This is, if you wanna... If you wanna delete somebody, this is probably the best skill you have as a Musa. So, anyways, going back to the Awakenings. Um, as I said, these are the choices I made and the reasons for that. And like I said, Twister. I still sometimes use Twister as an opener. Um, I'm not sure if I explained that, but like I said, Twister is a stiffness, actually. So, this can be used. Um, it also gives you super armor. So, if you actually manage to bait somebody, then... Or does it give you super armor? No, it's actually forward guard. My bad, it's actually forward guard, that's the case. So it's not actually super armor, but you're blocking. So this is actually going to protect you from everything but grabs, but still. Really, really, really good. Yeah, like I said, very low cooldown, so... I really like baiting people with that skill, so this is the reason. 10% crit. And uh, the PvE damage, because I'm... too cheap and too stingy to spend stuff. Anyways, hopefully this was, uh, I guess... Helpful for you guys on why I took certain awakenings. This works very well for me in PvP. By by all means, I'm not the best Musa. I'm certainly not the best geared Musa, first of all. Uh, but even even with that mediocre gear, I can very well hold my own. Even without the use of excessive elixirs like a Carnage and um, Human Hunt and whatever else you can pop, you know, these things that basically allow you to one-shot people. But yeah. We can still one-shot most people if they are overextending super hard and we catch them, but yeah. Anyways, this sums it up for the Skeleton video. As I said, hopefully this was helpful for some of you guys. And if you want to learn more about itemization and what items to focus on, then feel free to check out the third video in this series and hopefully see you guys there.